Welcome to the Bloodhound Quick Start Guide. In this video, we'll go over installing Bloodhound, the basics of how Bloodhound works, and show you some methods to layer advanced logic into your system. I'm going to make the assumption that you know a little about trading systems and indicators, and that you have some basic knowledge of NinjaTrader. You'll see how easy it is to get up and running with your first Bloodhound system. So let's get started. To install Bloodhound, simply open up the NinjaTrader control panel. Go to the File Utilities menu. Select Import Ninja Script. You may get this warning message if you have not done this before, but that's okay. Just dismiss it. Now navigate to the file you downloaded from our website. Open it up. And you're done. I'd like to start out by showing you a trivial simple moving average crossover system. As a trader, you've probably encountered this familiar system or something like it. It's the first system many traders are taught, and it's a simple system to understand. A moving average crossover system uses a fast moving average with a relatively short period and a slower moving average with a longer period. The general idea is that the fast moving average will stay on one side of the slow moving average when there are small fluctuations in the market until a strong enough trend brings the fast moving average definitively to one side of the slow line. We want to capture the moment it crosses sides and ride the current trend. Thus, there are only two signal rules. Go long when the fast crosses above the slow and vice versa. As you can see on my monitor, I've opened up NinjaTrader to a 5 minute chart of crude oil. I have two moving averages. The orange is the fast moving average with a period of 10, and the blue is a slow moving average with a period of 30. In case you're wondering, these numbers aren't of any particular importance, they're just chosen to illustrate this example. We are looking for these crossover points where the orange line is crossing over the blue line, as you can see in this case. In this instance, we have the orange line crossing above the blue line, which is what we defined earlier as our long signal. Here, you can see the reverse situation. Let's begin by opening up the indicator selection screen on NinjaTrader. Select SI Bloodhound. On the right hand side, scroll up to the first item under Settings, entitled Template. Click the Ellipses button, which will now bring up the main Bloodhound interface. Now you will see two tabs one named Solvers, and the other named Logic. On the Solvers tab, click the drop-down to list the number of available solvers. I'll go over what these solvers are and what they do later. For now, we're looking for the Indicator Crossover Solver. Select it and click Add. I'm going to name this the 1030 Cross. You'll notice below that we have two indicators associated with this solver. Indicator A is the fast moving average, and Indicator B is the slow moving average. Click the ellipses button to open the indicator selection dialog. On the left hand side, you'll see a very familiar list of all the indicators installed on your system. Bloodhound is designed to work with all NinjaTrader indicators, be it system indicators, a third party indicator, or perhaps an indicator you've developed yourself. We already have the Simple Moving Average indicator selected, so all we need to do is change the period to 10 and click OK. We will now do the same for indicator B, specifying a period of 30 for the slow moving average. As you can see, Bloodhound has now marked the chart with the crossover points. Notice how there is a red bar depicting the short signals and a green bar marking the long signals. Also, take note that these values range from 0 to 1 on both sides. I will now show you how Bloodhound calculates its values. A basic understanding of the mechanics of Bloodhound will allow you to create advanced systems as complex as your needs dictate. You saw in the previous section how Bloodhound produces a long value and a short value for each bar. We call these values confidence values and they range from 0 to 1. 0 means a low confidence and a 1 a high confidence. Thus, if you have a 1 for the long side and a 0 for the short side on a particular bar, your system is favoring the long side. You can specify that a valid signal requires the confidence value to exceed a certain number. Bloodhound, for example, 
defaults to 0.8 as that threshold, and so any confidence value above 0.8 is considered a valid signal for that direction. This value can, of course, be customized to suit your liking. Let's see how these values are generated. Bloodhound arrives at these output values using a two-step process. First, you pick a set of solvers. These solvers evaluate things like the slope of an indicator, the length of a bar, the distance of the current price to some support and resistance level, or as we saw in the previous example, a crossover event. There are many included with Bloodhound. Solvers are basic building blocks that analyze aspects of your chart or indicator. They too also make evaluations in both directions, producing a number somewhere between 0 and 1 for the long and short side. Next, these solvers are processed through a logic template. Here is where you can take the raw observations from the solvers and really craft something great. You can create any result you desire using arbitrarily complex logic. Suppose you wanted to capture crossover events that had a correspondingly good slope on another indicator. No problem. Simply plug a slope solver and a crossover solver together into an AND logic node. As with the solvers, logic templates still evaluate both the long and short side for each bar. The result from the logic template is the output for Bloodhound. Additionally, Bloodhound allows you to define as many logic templates as you like, allowing you to swap between them on the fly as you see fit. For example, you could create a set of rules that work well in trending markets, and a different set of rules that work well in stationary markets then simply swap between the two as you trade. Remember, each logic template still continues to evaluate both the short and long sides simultaneously for every bar. So let's go about enhancing our original system. To do this, we will use the powerful logic template features in Bloodhound. Additionally, I will also demonstrate how to incorporate multiple time frames into your system. Many traders do not restrict their view of the market to only one time frame when trading. Often, it is desirable to view a larger time frame to get the feel of the overall market. With Bloodhound, it's easy to incorporate characteristics on any time frame into your template logic. So let's say you're a trend trader looking to only take signals in the direction of the main trend. You can use a larger time frame chart to examine the overall direction of the market and assess the strength of the trend. We will apply our analysis to the 15 minute time frame in this example. To do this, Let's introduce two more indicators, an ADX indicator which measures the strength of a trend, and a 100 EMA tied to the 15 minute chart that we added earlier to determine the overall direction. The ADX indicator is a non-directional indicator, that is, it does not give any clue as to which way a direction is going, only the strength of that trend. When the ADX is above 25, it is said that the market is trending strongly in one direction but you may want the ability to tinker with this threshold to achieve a result you're satisfied with. With Bloodhound, it's easy to change these values on the fly to instantly see how they will affect your system. On my screen, you now see two charts. On the left is the larger time frame, which is showing a 15-minute crude oil chart. On the right is the 5-minute chart that we started with earlier. Again, let's open up Bloodhound. First, we're going to add the indicator threshold solver for the ADX indicator because we want to test the ADX indicator for being above 25. As before, we will select our indicator, the ADX. The indicator threshold solver checks to see if an indicator is above or below a certain threshold value. In fact, you can test the indicator against four separate thresholds, A, B, C, and D. We only need to see if the ADX will be above 25 so we'll just set A to 25. Below, you see the output configuration. As you learned in the previous section, 1 means a favorable value and 0 an unfavorable value. So now we can just set the long and short outputs at level A to be 1. This will give us good values for both the short and long side when the ADX is above 25. Now let's add the EMA, which we will base on the 15 minute time frame. You'll notice that there is an Add Chart button here. Click it to add a new chart to Bloodhound, which we'll set at 15 minutes. Now, any solver that we add to this time frame will be calculated as if it were on a 15-minute chart. 
You may now already be thinking, is it possible to use Bloodhound to summarize the information on multiple charts? The answer is yes. You can now capture all the information in Bloodhound, eliminating the need to scan multiple charts while trading. I'm now going to dismiss the dialog and press OK to activate the indicator. I'm also going to activate the simulated data feed to demonstrate that you can manipulate your settings in the live market and Bloodhound will reflect changes in real time. At the very top of the chart, you'll notice a new button labeled 1030 cross. Click it to reopen the Bloodhound interface. Now let's take a look at the logic template system in Bloodhound. Click the logic tab and create a new logic template. The first thing you'll notice is the empty green workspace in the center window with a single node labeled result. Logic nodes are added to this workplace to tell Bloodhound what you want to do with the solver values. The final result is plugged into this result node to let Bloodhound know this is the output you want. You can scroll around the workspace by holding the middle mouse button down and dragging across the screen, or by selecting the hand icon in the toolbar above, like so. Let's begin by adding the ADX Threshold Solver. Navigate to the Solver Nodes menu and find the ADX Threshold Solver under the default time frame. I like to see the result of each node before connecting it to any complex framework to ensure it is indeed giving us a result we want. To connect the node, place the mouse near the output dot and click drag the mouse button to the result node. Immediately, we should see results on our chart. You'll notice that Bloodhound has defined a value of 1 for any bar where the ADX is above the threshold of 25 and below 1 otherwise. You'll also notice that the values seem to slope up as the ADX approaches 25. This is because we actually have a range defined between the A and B thresholds from 0 to 25. Bloodhound is calculating the solver output by linearly mapping the values between 0 and 25 to 0 and 1. Hence, an ADX value of 12.5, which is halfway to 25, will yield a value of 0.5. Let's narrow this range to 15 to 25 to give us a more pronounced effect. Now, 15 to 25 will be mapped to 0 and 1, and thus, if the ADX drops below 15, we will get an output of 0. This effectively tells the system to ignore the ADX when it drops below 15, but tells Bloodhound to start giving the ADX significance as soon as it breaches that 15 to 25 zone. We are effectively laying the foundations of a fuzzy logic system, which works in ranges rather than digital values. Alternatively, if we want a digital result, we can set B to 25 and remove the ranging effect entirely as you can see here. Let's return it to 15 for now. Bloodhound can work effectively using either a digital or fuzzy logic methodology. As you may recall, Bloodhound defaults to a signal when the output is above 0.8, but you can change this value to 1 if you prefer a more digital approach. Embracing fuzzy logic is useful for softening the hard digital edges of a system, allowing you to qualify values that almost meet a specific requirement as still good. This can come in handy for point scoring based systems and also allow you to see degrees of confidence in your signals. Now let's add the EMA slope solver to the system. Right click the node workspace to bring up the pop-up menu. This time the solver is under the 15 minute time frame. Select it. Again, I will connect it directly to the result node so we can verify the output. Let's step back and observe both charts. The EMA is on the 15 minute time frame chart on the left, and our main chart is on the right. You can see on our main chart that there are red zones for when the EMA is going down and green zones for when it is going up. You'll notice that we have discrete values that flip from 1 to 0 and vice versa. To establish the smoothing effect we saw earlier, we just need to define a range like we did before. I find it useful when manipulating solver values to consider the long side only. In most cases, the short side will automatically mirror the long side. Let's add a range here. Remember slope is the amount of movement per bar and on a moving average, these values are typically very small. As you can see, when you change any value, the chart updates instantly. 
allowing you freedom to play with the values until you find settings that match what you're looking for. Once you're happy, it is now time to connect everything together. Let's add a logic node which will tie the results together. Select the AND node because we want both the ADX and the EMA slope to be good at the same time. Now we simply plug both solvers into the AND node. As you might suspect, we also plug the output of this into the result node. Let's scan over our chart and see how we look so far. As you can see, we have filtered a tremendous amount since crossover events only occur in a few places in the green and red zones. Finally, let's add our original crossover signal event to the workspace. Again, we want to connect it to the AND node. Bloodhound now marks only the crossover events where the ADX and EMA are both favorable. If you recall, these were our original system rules. This concludes the Quick Start Guide, and I hope you got a taste of what's possible using Bloodhound. In summary, you learned how to create a simple system based on a 1030 simple moving average crossover. You learned how Bloodhound calculates its values, and you got an introduction to the logic templating system. However, what you've seen only begins to scratch the surface. I'd like to encourage you to experiment and gain experience with the system. Bloodhound has many parts to it, and taken as a whole, it can be a little overwhelming, but you can take your time to understand each piece on its own, and later use that knowledge to enhance your systems bit by bit. The important thing to understand is the basics of how it all fits together, so don't be afraid to re-watch this video as many times as you need to. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. To learn more detail and explore different aspects of the system, visit our website at www.sharkindicators.com. Have fun and happy system building!